Are you always trying to figure out what you're going to make for dinner, but you don't want to make the same thing over and over and over and over again? That's where I come in. I love trying new recipes, and if we deem them winners, we share them with you. Hey y'all, I'm Mandy, and this is Mandy in the Making. It is Friday night, and I know it's not Friday night for you at the moment. Maybe it is. I don't know. But here, Friday nights are very casual. We either go out or order in or just kind of do our own thing. So tonight I thought, let me just look through the pantry and see if I have anything that I could make, like throw together and not necessarily follow a recipe, but find something good to eat. The name is to be determined. I mean, that's not the name. We'll figure out the name. I'm gonna let Steven name it. But I went through the fridge and the pantry and just kind of came up with a concoction of a somewhat light Friday night dinner because it's just me and Steven gonna be eating this and I think he had somewhat of a large lunch. He went to lunch with his mom like he does most Fridays. So he had kind of a large lunch, so I'm gonna keep it kind of light. We've got very simple ingredients. Let me show you. So I thawed a couple of chicken sausages out. They were in the freezer. I've got some Parmesan cheese. This, I'm just throwing it in here because we have some left. It doesn't necessarily go with the theme. This is more of a Greek type thing and we're going more of Italian. I've got this, I had bought this for a recipe. And honestly, we usually use Olive Garden Italian dressing, so I want to use some of this up. So I thought, what if I mix that with a little bit of pesto? Because that was in the fridge too. And then I've got some bow tie pasta. We have a couple of tomatoes that need to be used, so. Okay, I'm just gonna boil our pasta. Just, you know, make that like normal. Several of you told me to put a little bit of olive oil, I guess just, just that much, into the water, and I guess that helps it from boiling over. We're gonna find out, but let's bring this water up to a bowl and let's put this skillet over here and heat it up to about medium high while we go chop up the chicken sausage. If you don't have chicken sausage, you could definitely just do chicken breast, just cook those. Um, I was planning on doing that actually. I was gonna put those in the uh, air fryer, just season them and put them in the air fryer and cook them that way. And I saw these and I wanted to use these because it's even easier and I love chicken sausage. You know what else I just found in the fridge? Diced onion that Steven chopped up to go with pintos. So I'm gonna throw this in with the chicken sausage because we need to use it and this will be great sauteed with that. In our skillet, let's add just a little bit of olive oil. I don't know how much, till it looks right. And let's see, I don't think it's quite ready yet. No, nah, we're gonna give it another second. <laughs> let's shred a little bit of Parmesan cheese as well. I'm gonna reserve this little bit and give some to the cheese monster here in just a minute. What's up? Why do you have to get me on here? Because they wanna see you, I promise. <laughs> He's coming here and checking out the chicken sauce. Well, he just got off work. Well, are you off work yet? Almost. Almost. Got a little few it's, minutes. I'm basically off. It's 4.44 on a Friday afternoon. I'm I, at a good stopping point. Okay, good. All right, so this is starting to sizzle. That's how you know if your, your pan's ready or not when you hear the sizzling. So let's add the rest of our chicken sausage over here. I won't do that. I'm oh. Here. Shh. Are you going to do it all at once? All at one time. Look at that. Look at you. I'm just gonna pretend that that oil did not just come out on me and burn me. Okay. Yeah, let's so just be pretend. Be careful when you're putting that in there. Uh-huh. All right, we're gonna add that onion in there too. And we're just gonna saute this until it's brown. Hello. Say it's in the 70s out here and I'm just happy as can be, but I know what time it is. It's cheese time. She's been hanging out out here. We're trying to enjoy the last little bit of the porch uh, until, you know, it gets too cold out here, but she's been snoozing. That's it, baby, that's it. Was this so good? Oh yeah. I've had several of you ask if she has cataracts. I guess she does. She's pretty much just kind of going blind. That's why her pupils stay so big. She can hardly hear anything. Yeah. I'm just a little old woman. Yeah. Tell them. Say thank you for being concerned about me. All right, bye Gracie Lou. Bye. Okay, I should have waited to start this once my noodles started boiling, but that's okay. Someone decided she needed to come inside with me. You know, just in case some of this just hops down and right into her mouth. This is done. I just moved it off the eye. I'm gonna let that just hang out back here. This is finally starting to come to a boil over here. And like I mentioned, I've just got um, not quite half of this box of bow tie pasta. So that's what we're gonna use. Let's hope and pray that this does not boil over. 
What you think? You think it's gonna do it? I don't know, maybe I didn't put enough oil in it. We'll see. If you have cherry tomatoes on hand, that would be great. You could just half those. We're just gonna go with what we have. So our tomatoes are chopped for the pasta. Now let's make our dressing. We're gonna go in with some zesty Italian about a half a cup of that and some basil pesto. We're just gonna do it till my little taste test comes out just right. So I'm gonna start with, I don't know, a tablespoon. Okay, I'm gonna taste this. It's not the prettiest, but I'm gonna taste it. See what I think. Oh man, that's good. I'm getting a clean spoon, don't worry. I'm gonna add just a tad bit more of the basil pesto. I really like that. I'm a huge pesto fan though. Not till later in life. When I tried it many years ago, I did not like it. It's funny how your taste buds change over the years. Okay, let me test it again. Ooh, that is good. So I'm gonna set that to the side. And the last thing I guess I need to do is just chop up a few of these Kalamata olives. You could do regular olives. These are the only ones we have on hand and we're just trying to use what we have. Update. This has not boiled over. Well, I'll be a monkey's uncle. That worked. Put a little bit of olive oil in it. Let's start adding all of this to a bowl. I'm gonna throw in my chicken sausage and onions. I'm gonna throw in my tomatoes and my olives. If you had some spinach, that would probably be good. We don't have any right now. Okay, so now I have uh, drained the pasta. I also ran a little bit of cold water over it just to cool it down a little bit. It didn't. I didn't cool it down completely. Let's just toss this around. You know what, let's add that Parmesan cheese. Yeah, I wish I had some spinach, that would make it really pretty. Let's take our Italian pesto, Italian dressing. I'm gonna go with about half of what I made first. Toss it, I think that's enough. So I'll put measurements-ish down below. <laughs> well, that y'all is dinner for a Friday night. Super easy, super fast. Hopefully it tastes good, let's find out. Oh, look at those trees. Those are our crepe myrtles. They just look so pretty. This looks very unique. I'm obviously familiar. I mean, you got the bow tie pasta, some tomato, chicken sausage, some cheese. I can't get the tomato on here to save my life. Mmm, <laughs> okay. It needs some more of that um, dressing. You want me to go grab some more dressing? No. I don't think it yeah, mine's fine. Okay, you get a little bit of uh, pesto and then you get some of the Italian dressing. Mm -hmm. It's pretty good for a pancake. Mm -hmm. If you wanted to do diced tomatoes in the can, then you can make this hot. I mean, I could have made it hot even with the fresh tomatoes, but I don't know. To me, fresh tomatoes means colder pasta salad. Mm -hmm. So. But this is really good. So you just came up with this. Well, yeah. So you just yeah. pull stuff out and threw it together and said that that would taste good. Yeah. Did you I do, do good? Yeah. Don't mind if I do. <laughs> I feel like a pasta salad is just one of the easiest pantry meals there is. Mm -hmm. Because you just use what you have and throw it all together with a good dressing yeah. and call it a meal. And this is delicious. I mean, obviously, someone thought so. That pesto. Yeah. That's good stuff. Yeah. Keep that in the pantry because. Yeah. It, it just has so much flavor. For those of you who weren't here for Tuesday's video, this is... Not your grandmother's pumpkin pie. <laughs> this is called No Bake Marshmallow <laughs> Pumpkin Pie. Now, I did a taste test on Tuesday, but he wasn't here for that taste test, so he's had a piece. He already knows what it tastes like, but I said, the people want to know. They want to know. What Stephen thinks of the I No mean, Bake. I the thickness of the thing. Y'all, the consistency I mean, is where could, it's at. You could almost lay down on that thing. It does look like a nice little pillow, don't it? It does. Okay. Just lay your head down. All right. <laughs> Here we go. Definitely marshmallow. See? The texture. The texture. Of the marshmallow. Yes. Is absolutely amazing. It's so good. It is like eating a cloud. It is. It's it a is good like description. Amazing. Yeah. And obviously the flavors. Yeah. I mean, the pumpkin flavors are coming through. Yeah. But it's not overly pumpkin-y. No, it's not overly pumpkin-y. Yeah. Just a little pumpkin spicy. A little eh. You know. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, definitely uh, like eating a cloud of pumpkin. It's really good, y'all. Mm. Now you make me one piece. And I already had a piece earlier today. I don't need another piece. Uh, better hurry up and get it. <laughs> it ain't gonna last much longer. 
Oh, goodness. Okay, so it is Friday night, which means I had a video go up today. And yeah. in this video from last week, I got on to Steven for burping. And I said, no, you can't burp on camera. <laughs> Y'all have been so vocal in the comments <laughs> about the burping situation. So he's going to read a few comments that he's finding. I want to find that one that was absolutely hilarious. Who, who said it, first of all? Vicky said, in our house while growing up, we used to say it's better to burp and taste it than fart and waste it. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh. That's, a, that's my new favorite saying. <laughs> <laughs> Rootin' tootin' crockpot meals. <laughs> Who said that? That was S Scoob Doo. Scoob Doo? Scoob Doo said rootin' tootin' crockpot meals young. <laughs> Bears Critter said, in our house, there's no shame with bodily functions. There's more room out than in. Let her rip. <laughs> oh, and a lot of people liked your comment about you don't need teeth to eat that uh, cube steak, too. <laughs> Uh, hello, <laughs> Bethel says, you don't need teeth. And she has the laughing faces. I love it. <laughs> See if you can answer this. What's that? This comment is from Sam Stone. And it says, what is chow chow? I googled it. And it said, relish. Is that what you're talking about? It's kind of like relish. In other words, it's pickled. Yeah, it is pickled. Um, but it's uh, cabbage. Cabbage. Cabbage, it's cabbage got, and it's got turmeric in it. It's got turmeric in it and cabbage and there's more stuff in there. I, I don't know exactly. Well, what's they're that. all different too, but my grandfather and my grandmother, they're the ones that introduced me to uh, chow chow among other things. My grandmother used to make something called green tomato pickles and that's just green tomatoes that she picked and put in yep. vinegar. Yep. And sometimes she'd spice it up a little bit, put some uh, hot peppers in there with them. It makes them real hot. That's right. And uh, I used to love eating those with Pop. He would eat with green tomato pickle, sometimes a sliver of onion. Right. And uh, and then he would put chow chow on his beans. And the way Grandma made his plate was, his plate was in a bowl. Mm -hmm. The rest of us ate off plates, but Pop, he would eat from a bowl. And you can't really separate everything out because everything's touching. And Pop would just kind of mix it all in there right. and eat it like that. Right. But, I love uh, that. but yeah, chow chow. You can get chow chow mild, hot. I like the hot stuff. Everybody, I mean, just like everywhere else, they make it different, you know. I'm glad we were able to answer it. He's sitting here scrolling through comments. I'm sitting here scrolling through comments. So, just in case you ever wonder, yes, we, we look at your comments and we enjoy them very much. Okay, y'all, for our second pantry meal, we are going to be trying something that one of you suggested. It's going to be kind of like our subby supper for this week. I will explain that in a little bit but that's the main dish to go along with it i'm making something that has been in my family forever that will be served absolutely will be served on thanksgiving day so that's another reason why i wanted to include it in this one it only takes three ingredients which i pretty much keep those on hand so that we can make this it is my mama's brown rice it's my family's brown rice because her mama made it i just call it my mama's because my mama always made it for me but I need to preheat the oven and get that into the oven before we make our main dish. Okay, we're gonna preheat the oven to 350. Okay, to get started, I rinsed one cup of rice. We are just going to empty the can of French onion and the can of beef consomme. We're gonna cover this tightly. I'm gonna just stir it around a little bit, cover it tightly, and it's gonna bake for about an hour at 350. It is time to do the protein for this meal, and that's where one of you comes into play. It's just a little tip from Michelle. And if you get my newsletter, you may have already seen this tip put in to my newsletter. So little plug here. If you don't get my newsletter, if you'll go to my website, mandythemaking.com, scroll down, and you'll see that you'll get five of our favorite recipes if you sign up for the newsletter. So you'll get that instantly. And then I send out a newsletter just once a month with various things in there and one of the sections in the newsletter are tips and tricks from you guys and so michelle was featured in the newsletter with this tip or trick and we're going to give it a try today so if you've been around for a while you know not too long ago i did an updated version of my what to make with stuffing mix video and i bought the pepperidge farm stuffing mix from sam's club and it comes in very large bags so i still have some left over so we're going to use that as a coating today on our chicken and I'm going to do it in the air fryer. She just said to pan fry it. Um, I guess you could bake it too, but we're just going to do it in the air fryer just to make it super easy. 
but I'm going to crush up some of this and it's going to become our coating for our chicken. Now, she mentioned doing it in the food processor, processor and that's probably a smarter idea. But my food processor, I don't feel like going and getting it out. It's not easily accessible. So, okay, that was super satisfying, just in case you were wondering. So, if you're doing a small amount like I am, just grab you a rolling pin and go to town. All right, let me grab my chicken. I don't know, I don't know what happened here. It had a it had a malfunction junction. Okay, this is some butcher box chicken. I'm gonna trim it up and cut them because they're kind of thick. If you've ever gotten butcher box chicken, number one, I highly recommend it. Not sponsored, but I highly recommend it. But it is pretty thick, so a lot of times you have to butterfly it, which is what I'm about to do now. That way it'll cook more evenly when it's in the air fryer. So let me do that and I'll be right back. So let's add our, for lack of a better word, breadcrumbs pretty much, <laughs> over here to this bowl. And I'm gonna season this with just a little bit of seasoning. I'm gonna try my hand in this. So Tabby was telling me that you can go you, you can go ham with this, meaning you can put a lot of this seasoning on it. Um, I was a little hesitant because there's been seasoning mixes and blends in the past that have been a little more on the salty side, like Auntie Nono's. I love it, but it replaces your salt, so you have to kind of be careful with it. This is not so heavy on the salt, so I'm going to season it on one side, flip it to the other, and season it as well before we bread it. There we go. That just gives it a little more flavoring. There's already seasoning in here, but you know, never hurt to put a little more flavoring in there. I'm gonna make a mess, it's happening. It's what I do best. Let me get a plate. Actually, you know what? No, we're gonna put it, no, okay. Welcome to cooking with Mandy when she doesn't have a recipe. She can't make up her mind about things. All right, that's what we're doing. I'll do these with the rest, or do the same thing with the rest of these three, and I'll be right back. Um, we're gonna preheat this to 380. Okay, this just finished preheating. So let's spritz it with a little bit of oil on the bottom. Okay, where is my fork? What did I do? I have no idea. Okay, hold on. Go. And there was this random piece that kind of fell off. I went ahead and bre breaded it as well. I'll just throw it over here in the corner. It'll be okay. All right, I'm gonna spritz the top of our chicken with some oil too, so it'll crisp up a little bit. Okay, and let's put it in the air fryer. We're gonna go 380. Let's try 12. We'll check it at that point. We don't wanna overcook it. We can always cook it more, but if you're ever curious as to how long you should be cooking something in the air fryer, this little cooking magnet, air fryer cooking times magnet is wonderful. You get it on Amazon, pretty sure it's less than $10. I, don't quote me on that, you know how prices change, but I just came over here and I look for chicken. It says chicken breast boneless. It says 380 for 12 minutes. So that's what we're starting with. Now, sometimes if it's thicker, it will take longer, but I just wanted to give you that heads up. This thing is wonderful. It's how I know what to cook and how long in the air fryer. The second side dish that we're gonna have with our, this is lunch today. I don't know if I told y'all this. With our lunch today is a little salad. I just picked some of lettuce from our indoor garden. If you don't know what I'm talking about, go back to Tuesday's video and you'll see all about it. Okay, these just came out. Don't they look so good? They browned up so nicely. They smell delicious. I'm gonna make sure they're done. Okay, I'm going through like to the fattest parts and just making sure. Oh, they're done. Okay, so I'm gonna let these sit here. Our rice has just over three minutes left and our little mini salads look great. We have recently fallen in love with this ranch. If you have not tried the Olive Garden Parmesan Ranch, highly recommend, very good. Brown rice just came out of the oven. It smells amazing. Let's eat, y'all. What are we doing here, Stephen? We are going to eat some chicken <laughs> that's got this uh, stuffing crusted crust on it. There you go. Stuffing crusted. Stuffing, stuffing crusted, crusted chicken. chicken. All right, I like it. <laughs> I like it. Oh. Yo, it's so juicy that it just like squirted it's all over the place. Word it out. Like, do look. You, look at 
Yeah. I, I like press my fork into it and it, like all the juices. <laughs> this thing must be like incredibly tender. Hold on, let's see. Oh. Yeah, I can just cut it with my fork. Okay, good. Okay, let's yeah. give it a try. Yeah. Interesting. That's perfect seasoning for the um, chicken. Awesome. Very like crunchy, got yeah. a good crust on it. Yeah. It's really good. Not soggy. Not soggy at all. No, it's not soggy. Not soggy, not Does one it have bit. Plenty of flavor. I mean, it's got the flavor of all that stuff, stuffing, stuffing yeah. mix on there. Yeah. So you've got all I of added the, a little bit of the adobo seasoning too, just to add some extra. Yeah, it's got, you know, the stuffing mix has all of those uh, herbs and things those in there. Savory, you can, yeah. You can taste yeah. the herb. For shooting for the stars. Okay. Yeah. Maybe just a little bit of gravy. Yeah, of course. Gravy I mean, makes everything better. I mean, that would be right. that would be the only thing, but yeah. I mean, in terms of flavor. Yeah. Okay. I mean, this is like just a seasoned chicken breast. Yeah. It's been cooked. Yeah. And I like the fact that it has um the crunch to it. Yeah. It has that texture. To yes. It. I like that a lot. All right. Really. All right. I'm going to dig in, but I'm so excited that this worked out. So thank you, Michelle, for giving us that tip on using the stuffing mix to yeah. coat the chicken. Oh, that's awesome. That's a great, great idea and a great way to use up any last little bit of stuffing mix you may have. Okay. It is dinner time and we are going to work on our last pantry meal. I think this one, I've got ground beef. I've got some salsa. I've got frozen corn. I've also got some Jiffy corn muffin mix. Um, if you have this in your pantry and you're looking for more recipes to use this with, I think I have one, two, maybe three, I'm not sure, videos that I've done in the past using Jiffy corn muffin mix. So check those out, I'll link those below. But I'm gonna do some sort of filling, almost, okay, think shepherd's pie, but instead of mashed potatoes on top, we're gonna do Jiffy corn muffin mix and stick it in the oven and let it bake. So I've got an onion, we're gonna throw that in with the ground beef as it cooks. And I'm just going to use my little chopper here. Again, if you missed this, if you're having problems with bad onions this year, buy organic. I've not had any bad ones since I started buying organic. And I know it's a little more costly to do it that way, but if you're throwing out half of your onions anyway because they're no good, I mean, is it really costing you more? Not really, so just thought I would share. Okay, this is the salsa, salsa I'm using today. I have this on hand because I love the salsa verde when we're making white chicken chili. So for this recipe, I'm gonna be using this skillet because it can go from stovetop to the oven. If you don't have one that can do that, um, you could use cast iron, it can do that. But if you don't, you could always just cook the mixture here and then just transfer it to a casserole dish, not a problem. Okay, so I just threw a pound of ground beef in there. I feel like that onion was a little large, so I don't know that I'm gonna do this entire thing. I may just save some of this onion for maybe tomorrow for whatever I'm gonna make. We, we put onion in pretty much everything. Leave a comment below. What do you always put in everything? We put onions and garlic in just about every dish that we make. You know what else? Someone left a comment and I'm sorry, I can't remember who left this comment, but I remember them saying they dice up a lot of onion all at once and then put them in individual little baggies and freeze them. I'm gonna figure out what we're making tomorrow. If I don't need this, I will just put this in a little bag and put it in the freezer. While we are waiting on this to brown, I'm gonna go ahead and preheat our oven. We're gonna preheat it to 400, basically the same instructions. I'm gonna just gonna follow the instructions on the Jiffy box. So I'm going to prepare this just like it says to do it. And then we'll bake it pretty much just like it says to do it. We're gonna season it just a little bit this has obviously got plenty of flavoring, so we don't need a whole lot of seasoning. I'm gonna add some of this chipotle spice. It's chipotle chili powder. And then we're also gonna add in just a little bit of dried oregano, maybe a teaspoon of that too. So now let's pour in our salsa. I'm probably gonna use most of this bottle, if not all of it. Yeah, I really should have used the smaller skillet now that I'm thinking about it. So don't use a super large skillet. Add just a little more in. I used about three fourths of that bottle. Now let's add in some corn. I just had this corn frozen. I just stuck it in this little baggie. It was like half a can. So it was in the freezer. I've thawed that. Let's add it in. And lastly, I think I'm going to add in some diced tomatoes. Let me go grab some. Okay, this is the Aldi version of Rotel. I did drain it, so I'm going to throw that in there. Okay, I'm just going to heat this through for just a second while I shred some cheese. I did turn that down to low, so it's just sitting there simmering. Okay, I'm gonna find my cheese monster and give 
her some cheese. I gotta pay the cheese tax because y'all know how that is. Somebody was asleep. I had to go wake her up. Okay. Oh, oh. Now that I have paid the cheese tax, let's move on. So let's make our jiffy. I need one egg and a third a cup of milk. And stir that all together. All right, let's go over to the stove. I actually brought this over here because it was just easier to film over here. So I'm just gonna cover this in our cheese. Use whatever cheese you like. This is all I have on hand right now. It's just the cheddar cheese, so that's what we're going with. And then I'm gonna try to evenly distribute this on top. But I, like I said, I think this is a little too big. This skillet is a little too big. So we're just gonna do the best we can here. So it's not gonna need to bake probably for the full time that it says on the box, just because, yeah. You, you see what I'm, I should have gone with the smaller one. Oh well, it'll be cute, right? So this is gonna go in a 400 degree oven. I'm gonna check it around 20 minutes and just see how it's doing. I think the box says, let's see, 15 to 20 minutes. I'll, I'll put it in for 15 and we'll check on it then. Okay, it's been 15 minutes. I just checked it with a toothpick and it's, it's done. So I'm just gonna let this cool for just a second and then we're gonna dig in. I've got some sour cream that we can serve this with. Also, I've got some cilantro, some cilantro growing in here. I don't know if you can hear that, but it is currently watering, but I'm gonna get some cilantro off of here so that we can put it on top too, if we want it. Uh, ooh, spice, got some spice in there. I love the filling of this, it's really good. And I like the um, cornbread on top. Awesome, what? You did good. Oh, thank you. This is really good. I'm, I was actually surprised. I was a little bit like, mm, a little sus, a little sus. But I'm liking this. Okay. I can definitely recommend this. Okay. Like, well, that makes me happy. Mm -hmm. So we've got our fresh cilantro on top. I was so excited about that. So it's a go backer because he just went back. I like this. Well, I'm so happy that you like no, this. No, I love this. <laughs> this is really good. What'd you call this? I didn't. I don't really, call it? I don't know. I think our subbies ought to try it and then come up with a name for it. Okay, so this is a nameless meal and we're relying on y'all to come up with a good name for it. So, and we should pick a winner for the best name. Yeah. And announce it in the next video. So name this dish for me. I've made something similar to this before, but this one is just what I had on hand, but name this for me and then we'll pick one that we like the most mm. and um, we will have a winner. So stay tuned to see if yours works. Got some spice in there. And it does have some spice, it's good. I like it. So bon appetit. That is three pantry meals. We did pretty good for pantry meals this week, didn't we? I think we need to stay in the pantry. <laughs> All right, y'all, tell us which one that you're, you're gonna try. Give us a name for this one and we will see you next time.